Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, in this video, uh, it's kind of the second update now on the potential for cold and possibly snowy weather through the end of February and into March. And that's kind of all associated with a sudden stratospheric warming which has taken place and is kind of, kind of ongoing as well. And that's, uh, those generally, not always, but generally do increase the potential for cold and snowy weather across the UK. And we're gonna look uh, in this video about whether it's kind of going to be the same this time uh, or not. And so I'll start off by looking at the kind of the charts of the sun, showing the sudden stratospheric warming. And I'll start off with this chart here, which is from the European model, and that's the zonal uh, mean wind of the stratosphere. Now it kind of looks a bit complicated, but I'll break it all down. So firstly, this 10 HPA, that's kind of a uh, kind of a measurement of the pressure, but also it's a measurement of kind of height, uh, how high up. The atmosphere is because at the surface uh, you've got the whole atmosphere pressing down so the pressure is around a thousand hectopascals usually and then when you go high up kind of to the stratosphere where uh, where this is all taking place um, basically you don't have so much of the atmosphere pressing down so the pressure is of course lower and then the zonal bit that's kind of referring to the, uh, the stratospheric kind of the polar vortex um, which is kind of the wind really high up between, I think, 10 and 50 kilometers, which is usually flow flowing from west to east like that, and that's called the zonal wind, um, and that kind of is this chart here. These really kind of the positive values is when we've got a really strong wind west to east, and then the negative values is when we have a kind of the wind has reversed, and in fact, it's going from east to west like that. And these blue lines are all the different possible forecasts by the individual members of this whole entire model. And when they're close together, we have kind of less confidence, less forecast certainty. And when they're really tight together like this, we have high confidence and high certainty. And you can see that as we leave kind of February and into March, the winds, interestingly, are going into a very kind of negative uh, phase. So the winds are reversing like that. Um, going from east to west instead and that's kind of showing the just the kind of stratosphere is really weak it's there's been a kind of sudden stratospheric warming and this is important because often you get um, I'll use this uh, picture here to explain often when you have a really strong I don't know what's purple I'd probably prefer like red or something uh, often when you get those really strong uh, polar vortexes like I was just talking about um, you can uh, what happens is you get a really strong jet stream it's really powerful and we get lots of big low pressure systems moving into the UK so it kind of the jet stream mirrors the uh, polar vortex however when I just showed you uh, that chart when you get a weakening or a reversal of the polar vortex and you get the wind uh, the polar vortex moving like this sometimes not always but sometimes you get a uh, an easterly wind or a northeasterly wind across the UK, but generally always you get increased um, high pressure or blocking. And that high pressure can really be anywhere. It can kind of be in the middle of the, the, middle of the Atlantic. It can be um, maybe across the UK. Sometimes it even can be kind of over here. But generally, uh, it's most often, not always, but most often kind of to the north of the UK like this. And that means that we often get those easterly colder surface winds. That's, so that's kind of the background, and that shows the stage is being set for a colder weather uh, kind of period across the UK. And that's backed up um, by, if I show you these weekly anomalies of temperature, and if I show you here, this is the week from the 27th to the 6th of March, and you can see it's likely to be below average across much of the southern UK. Possibly not really the, the stratospheric, southern stratospheric warming impact here, but will be colder than usual. And then potentially... Uh, the next week of March, as you can see here, these charts are not super reliable, but I generally think they're pretty good. Uh, and you can see here, we have below average blue temperatures across all of the UK and Ireland uh, from the 6th to the 13th of March. And this is likely to be the effects of that sudden stratospheric warming leading to increased blocking, as you can see here, that's the same week. And you've got those the pinks, purples, that's showing it increased high pressure. And we've got those the blues for kind of the lows moving into kind of the south like that and that's kind of showing that the European model at least in the long range is forecasting uh, something potentially colder and I haven't quite looked into beyond that I don't know if the looks like it probably I mean the signal is quite low by now but uh, maybe kind of a bit mild after that but at least from the kind of the beginning to the middle of March we have our interest increasing and if I show you some of the 
uh, model charts. I'll start off with the GFS here. Uh, they generally, by the way, this is a temperature around around 1.5 kilometers, and we generally want those dark blues and purples for snow. You can start off. You can see we've got our high pressure here. That's those white lines like that. So that's kind of this is for now. And you can see around the weekend we're going to get a shot of colder air uh, across, especially the eastern half of the UK. So potentially some snow showers across uh, eastern areas, uh, especially into Sunday. But generally, it's going to be feeling quite chilly over the next few days. Uh, and then notice into Sunday, we get high pressure kind of orienting itself, so we get a bit more of an easterly wind there. So potentially, we could see a few snow showers into kind of Kent and southeast England as we get the, the really cold air moving over the warm sea, leads to instability. Potentially a few sleet and snow showers for Kent during Sunday. Keep your eyes out. And then as we go into... Um, if we go into Monday, the kind of the confidence starts to decrease around here, and I'll show you in a bit. We've got the kind of differing ideas, but on the GFS at least, what is showing is potentially something a bit colder as we go into March here. You can see there those purple colours, colours showing up, uh, so potentially a signal for something colder. I'll show you the midnight run, run as well. That's showing another cold spell. Uh, the six o'clock run. I mean that was kind of the winter's kind of the winter lover galore if you like, or snow galore, uh, and that's basically, uh, don't take this too seriously, this is mainly just for fun to show uh, the snow lovers out there, and that basically just had a lot of big major snow events across the southern UK, and actually all of the UK as well, don't know why I just said south, um, so that was showing cold spell as well, uh, and then the latest one I just showed you that, a uh, bit of a cold spell, last night's 6 o'clock run was basically mild, so that's kind of the thing about these sun stratospheric warmings, we know you're going to get high pressure, we just don't know where exactly it's going to set up. Because, like I said, sometimes they set up into parts of mainland Europe, and we get mild air like that. But most of the time, generally, we get high pressure setting up to the kind of our north. And that's why, also supported by the, um, the European Long Range, and just now showing you the GFS, I do think we do have probably the increased likelihood of the high pressure to set up further north this time. I don't think it's going to be further south, so I think potentially colder weather is likely as we go into uh, March. If I show the European model as well, you can see kind of a different evolution uh, of kind of the situation. That high pressure kind of a lot more kind of flat like that. I mean, it's not cold air at all, really. I mean, it's probably a bit chilly, but kind of just average. If I show you the Canadian model, um, you can see maybe kind of cold air moving down, but nothing exceptional. So at least in kind of the next two weeks or so, nothing extreme looking likely because the GFS, I'm probably not going to take this too seriously considering its recent performance, which is not being great. This is more kind of for fun, but potentially into this period where the Canadian and European models weren't showing kind of this second, the second week of March, uh, which is supported by this. Uh, sorry, by this, I do think we have the increased likelihood of cold and, yes, possibly snow showers as well. If I show you the Metalvis forecast, you can see 28th of Feb to the 19th of March. You can see uh, a few wintry showers possible in southern areas. That's I think that's going to be this weekend. Uh, oh, actually, no, no, that's wrong, sorry. Uh, but basically, this is the bit I wanted to show you. Increasing risk of snow showers across the east and north and below average. Um... Uh, through kind of the 28th and 9th of Feb and then this is the more interesting one that I'm kind of interested in 10th to 24th of March the chance of some disruptive wintry episodes um, uh, so that's kind of for what the metaphors thinks and usually they're quite reliable so just wrapping up now I'll give a quick summary of this video we know sudden stratospheric warming has occurred and another weakening of the uh, polar vortex uh, is going to occur we've got good confidence on that um, and we know that means there's going to be high pressure uh, across kind of the North Atlantic, the UK and Europe, somewhere in there. We just don't know where it could be. It could be kind of anywhere around here like this. And it could be any one of these places. And that could mean we have anything from kind of normal average weather, cold weather or even uh, kind of warmer weather. Well, not warm, but mild weather. Uh, but mo the most likely one to me, based off the kind of uh, the GFS longer range, not super accurate, but backed up by the European uh, weekly uh, averages and a few other factors think that potentially the second week of March we could see increased cold to the uh, sorry increased high pressure to the north and potentially something colder from the north and east but the big disclaimer is at this range there is quite a lot of uncertainty uh, so something could kind of change completely 
Uh, we could see like a cold spell right at the end of February. I don't think that's going to happen, just saying that it's possible. But we could see really mild weather in March. There's kind of a lot on the table. But to me, I think this is the general most likely scenario. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye.